Survivor's ready. Go! Trap is spoken. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chicken. You can call me the puppet master. They're gonna be my little puppets. It's not like you're making me feel like the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. Who the hell bought it for me? Chicken. Damn! We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to talk glamour to you. <laughs> That Direct from Hobart, it's time for the only Survivor podcast in Australia dedicated to Survivor. Bringing you all the latest interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. It is Survivor Oz, Australia's number one TV and film podcast, as we come to you for another Survivor episode recap of the 31st season Survivor Cambodia Second Chance. Episode 7 is done and dusted. We're at the merge. There's lots to talk about, and what better person to get on the show to talk about it than a man who has been on this show plenty of times to talk about episodes in the past, and a man who very nearly was on this season, and a man who was robbed of not being on this season. I do speak, of course, from Survivor 1 World, Troy Zant Robertson. Troy, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Hey, Ben. How's it going, mate? Going well, going well. How about yourself? How is uh, the world treating you on uh, this morning when I'm speaking to you, at least right about now? It's actually, uh, it's yeah, it's really early in the morning. Sun's just coming up, but uh, it's very hot still here in Miami. So uh, we, we've had summer forever. It's like going to be another 87 degree day. And uh, yeah, that's it. And I'm still, you know, getting over my depression of not making it on second yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, um, it's yeah, we spoke to you obviously in the lead up to the, the campaigning of this season and Obviously, it'd be better to speak to you, and I guess better circumstances, post-season, as a winner, uh, all this sort of stuff. But um, it's kind of interesting because we, we had um, Carolyn on a few weeks ago. Um, I didn't actually host that episode, so I didn't get an opportunity. But um, if it's for yourself, though, Troy, given that you were on the ballot of this season, you sadly didn't make it, how is it actually watching this season, knowing that you very well could have been on this season? Well... You know, now that we're into episode seven, which I can't believe is already episode seven, it's it's been it gets easier week by week. I knew that watching the first episode was going to be just it's just heart wrenching for me because I was so close and I've been so close before. Hmm. Um, on you know, on I've been you know considered for fans versus favorites the second time around and. I was basically a few days away from going on Blood versus Water, the first one with my brother, and and now this one, I was almost like, okay, I'm in for sure. Now this is a guaranteed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like just watching it, the first episode where they're going through Cambodia and through the temples, and then you see them in the boats, and I'm just like, oh god, it's just, you know, because I I watch Survivor in a different way now, and it's like and I can just feel myself there, so. It was tough. I mean, I, I have to admit that, you know, and I'd see all the videos of everybody and people were posting like, oh, the new season, da, da, da. And it's like I couldn't get away from it. And it was like, it was, um, it was tough. I mean, it really was tough to, 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 to I had to turn my, my, my eyes away from the TV a few times just because I couldn't take it. Hmm. Yeah. Was it ever a sort of a thought in your mind that you might not watch this season? No, because I'm just a, <laughs> a fanatic to, to watch the show. I mean, I love watching the show. So, um, you know, I knew I'd watch it no, it's, no matter what. It's like, you know, the, the teams that don't make it to the Super Bowl, you know, mm. they're like, yeah, well, I'll still watch. I'm pissed off I didn't make it, but I'll still, <laughs> still you know, watch it. I, I just really still feel I know at some point I'll play. I, I just, you know. I, I really do feel that. I, I don't know what it is, if it's just some craziness that's inside me that that knows that I'll play. And I just feel like, well, maybe this time wasn't the right time around, and, and I'll be stuck with a good, a group that I really want to play with. You know, that's just it's just the way life goes. <laughs> so, well, well, you look at look at Terry Dietz. I mean, he, I think, had 87,000 times before he finally got back on the show. So um, you're slowly approaching probably the amount of um, near misses that Terry Dietz had before he eventually got cast, Troy. So you're nearly there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm close. You know, and then those guys' the stories are good, too. It's like they can only take so many, you know, 
older guys. And so, um, uh, it's, you know, and I, I've heard Savage's story too. I mean, he's just, you know, was so, it was so heart wrenching for him just because the way he went out in his season was really just not even really fair as far as the game went. He had zero control of what was happening, you know, and, and he's just said he's been dying, you know, it's just been this thing in his, brain and his heart for like whatever 15 years or however long it's been <laughs> mm. 10 years i guess and so you know I, i'm happy for those guys the more i the more i watch and see this stuff you know it's like uh but still i still feel like i still feel like i'm better at television <laughs> <laughs> well we'll definitely talk about savage because he's been interesting to watch this season but one question i'd love to know and i don't know if you you will answer this one or not troy because i don't know kind of how this is but going into kind of this lead up into this season with the voting process and everything that was happening how how much pre-game alliances were, were legitimately being made who who were you talking to who was approaching you pre-game be honest with us here there was pregame. I don't know if it was so much like alliances being formed, but people will call you. Like, you know, I talked to Spencer. I talked to Joe. I talked to um, who else was it? I've spoken with Abby Marie in the past. I spoke with, you know, and then I spoke with other survivors who were telling me, like, who's a lot. Like, you know, R I spoke with RC and I spoke with, um, God, who else? Uh, well, I spoke with Monica Culpepper, not so much Brad. I spoke mm -hmm. with Monica. She informed me about like what you know what Vetus might be doing, and you know all these people, you know, are like trying to figure out like who's who, who's talking to who. And the thing is, it's like we didn't really discuss. Okay, this is what we're going to do, and this is what should happen. It was more like, hey, let's talk. What do you think? And it's kind of one of those things where like let's just build you know, uh, in a sense of friendship or at least an idea, you know, let's just get to know each other on the phone. That way, if something, if we are on the same tribe or we end up with each other, it, you know, at the, at the end, like, at least we'll be, you'll be a person that I've spoken with, hmm. you know, it's kind of like to make an alliance is so, I just don't think it, it's intelligent to do because what happens is say I start calling 10 people and I could, we all have, we all have each other's phone numbers. We all, and if we don't, we all can contact each other in some way. Mm -hmm. So if I start calling everybody, then they're like, "Well, that Troy, he's really strategized. He's really playing hard." And then there's a becomes a target on my back that I'm really trying too hard, you know. So you don't want to you you want to talk to people, but you don't want to go overboard. And you know these pregame alliances, everything that I've ever heard from anybody that's played, never work. Yeah, they never were truly the way that they're supposed to work. You know, there was supposed to be, you know, a, a, a solid alliance of five, four or five people. You know, Shane Powers and Varner and and uh, Terry Dietz and uh, Wigglesworth. They're all, you know, they had it all planned out, and they were gonna, you know, do all their, you know. Alliance, uh, alliance forming out there, and if they got separated, they were going to come back together. It's like I, I, you can't predict how it goes, and producers know, and casting knows that we all know each other, and they're going to try to split that out. That's why they. That's probably what why they had them change so many times this year. Yeah. Like we're not going to uh, we're not going to allow you guys to play, even though you have to kind of play outside the game. You know, it's like it's tough because it's not. It just it becomes like. Is that fair to Survivor, and is that fair to the to the fans that are actually people that are watching the show? You know, do, do, does does all of you know the TV audience know that there's alliances being formed before the show even starts, and then do they know that that's happening? Is that fair to to you guys? Is they to, to in, you're, are you watching a show that really is like true to form, or are you watching just a version that's like, you know? being edited in a certain way that tells you just only what you want to hear so you know i'd rather have it just like listen let's go out and try to be as fair as we can once the game starts hey no problem you want to lie to somebody you want to tell a lie about somebody you want to steal somebody's rice you want to go crazy that's all part of the game there's no rules like that yeah but you know, there's no rule outside the game before you start playing it's like is that fair if I go, if I truly can say I did make an alliance of six solid people, and we went out there and we were all in the same tribe, and we, we that's already an advantage 
to us and it's not fair for the other people that are playing for a million dollars i mean you're this is for money so it's like is that truly fair yeah. you know and if you get if you if 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 you think that you know survivors all on a level playing gl- ground when we get when we get there and we all have a chance you don't have a chance at all if that's if that's the case which makes these you know? seasons very interesting and we've seen that so many times in these seasons haven't we and i'm um, you know i'm sure there are elements kind of in discussions that you had pre-game that perhaps you're seeing some of these uh you know conversations that might have happened pre-game form into certain areas of what you're watching on screen right now yeah and what happens too is like you say you do speak to someone pre-game do a pre-game alliance or or you make it like well you know we, we can i'd love to see you in a final three or four with me then all of a sudden, you, you can have that being used against you. Mm-hmm. You know, Spencer could say, you know, well, you know, I spoke with Troy several times. We, he came and visited me, and blah blah blah. We talked, or you know, or uh, whoever Keith can say, oh yeah, I talked to Troy. You know, he was a good guy, but you know, it's not the way he is now. And it's like, and then people are like, oh, you talked to him outside of the game, so you guys really did have alliance. Once the lies told about you, and you saw it in this episode. When lies start being told and then people try to confront each other, it's like it doesn't really work. If I tell a lie about somebody and then I, and then I you know, try to make it like, like it's a, like, uh, you know, like, like Cass did, hmm. you know, if you talk in front of the whole group about someone lying and lies, it becomes like it's a bad omen and it doesn't usually work. You know, people, th- and it's a matter of trust. It's a fine line. It's like when you start... When lies are starting to be told about people, and then those two people have their arguments in front of the whole tribe, the tribe's going to choose one side to believe. And once they've cho- made that choice, it, whether it's the truth or not, they, it doesn't matter. They've made up their mind, and that's yeah. it. It's done. You, you, will, you can't go back. That's the, that's the difficult part, and that's what happens sometimes when you make an alliance outside the game it can be used against you people can say like well, well i talked to him really he never told me you talked to him look at that kind of thing yeah like, he talked to me too but he never told me he talked to you so he must be lying so oh ooh, he's a sneaky guy you know it's so but it's all out there you know people always talk about trust but you know nobody trusts anybody but there but the paranoia is as high as it gets so whoever can be the less paranoid ends up going further and people that are the most paranoid drive everyone crazy, and they're like, oh, "Okay, he's paranoid, but paranoid must mean he's sneaky, and sneaky means he's not trustable." And I, I don't want to be around someone that's like I can't trust, or that I can't like at least get a read on. Yeah, you know? and it's fascinating, I guess, with this episode too. Um, kind of based on all what you were saying there too, but also going back even on past reputations from other seasons. I mean, that's kind of what a lot of this came through, wasn't it, with the Tash versus Cass situation. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was really down to Tash didn't trust Cass based on their first time playing, and Cass is saying, well, hang on a minute, this is a new game, come on, put this aside, but... I guess it's it's difficult. I mean, we saw that with, um, you know, from your season when we had, you know, Colton and Monica playing on Blood vs. Water. There was obviously um, issues there based on first-time playing. And I, I could imagine had you made this season with Sabrina, um, that could have been something that perhaps could have come to the front too because given how everything happened. I mean, do you feel, had you been out there with Sabrina, that there might have been some of that or could have you put that completely aside? It's a new game. Let's see where we're at now like Cass was trying to do. I just don't, I think it's one of these things where like in Survivor, not, like not so much real life, but in, in Survivor, because we're all in a sense as second chancers or third chancers or any all-star season, you, you already know that this is a game now. It's a little more of a game as opposed to like life. You know, like when you play the first time, like at least I did, it's like, wow, this, this is the adventure. And I'm like, it. you know, I took it to heart, like everything that we did, like real conversations that we had. And, you know, I thought like, okay, everyone's trying to make friendships or not friendships. And then we're playing a game inside that. Now it's like, okay, you're just playing the game. Hmm. So if I didn't trust Sabrina, you know, that much on my season, how am I going to just like all of a sudden just feel like, well, because we play on the same season, I can trust you 100%. You know, I, always in the back of my mind, it'll, I'll be like, you did this to me, you, you, you know, you lied to me, so why can't you, lie, you know, why can't you lie now? And if I see the way someone was on uh, on their season, I'm like, well, if you did that in your season, what, there's nothing to stop you from doing that now. And I tell people this all the time. 
survivors act like they they want to play a certain way or be a certain way, you're only going to be yourself. Whoever you are, you can't change. You can't change who you are deep down inside. You can have this facade of like on the outside of trying to fool people like like we are in our real lives. We try to let the world see who we are or perceive who we want to be. But deep down inside, you might be something else, you know, like a serial killer <laughs> is, you know, on the outside, they're all walking around. Look, at this guy's a businessman. He's like successful. He looks good. He acts nice. But guess what? Deep down inside, there's this weird devil inside and we don't even know. Yeah. So like, I'm just, that's why I say whoever you are deep down inside, that personality is you. You can see it in Abby Maria. That's who she is. She can't change who she is deep down inside. She can try to become different, but if she's that way, Cass is Cass. You can see it. Fishbach is Fishbach. Savage is Savage. Kimmy's Kimmy. They 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 haven't changed. Spencer Spencer. He's still the nervous little kid that he was on last time. He's trying to create relationships and do this, but he he's still the same person. He still, they're still gonna sense, gonna play the same way. They don't even realize it. Yeah. At least that's what I see. I don't see anybody like has some massive change. So nobody you know, really when, has. I mean, yeah, because when Cass looked like she was, but in a way, but this episode clearly, she, um, she, she hello uh, chaos yeah. Cass. <laughs> she wanted to be, be, be different. She or she wanted to at least let people think that she was different. You know, or see a different side of her, but. There, we didn't get there. I'm sure there's a two sides to cast, just like there's two sides to everyone, or three sides. But the but the cast that's the chaos cast. There is that side of her. That's that, that's not going away. So eventually, it's going to come out. You know, she can be the kumbaya cast, <laughs> no problem. She has that, and she she probably tried to do that. But guess what? The chaos cast is still there. It's still coming out at some point. Yeah. So it's not like it's just disappeared. It's you know it's just it's just like Spencer, you know he's he it's this, the Spencer that played last time is still going to come out at some point, you know, the Tasha is still going to come out, the Abba Maria is still coming out she, even though she's trying to be different, you know, which is all fascinating, and that's why they put these, you know, crazy twenty different personalities together. That's what makes this show interesting for people to watch because they're like. Well, what you know? Then in, in this episode, so much is happening. I like, I can't even keep track of like, okay, who was originally with who, and yeah. what tribe is this? And I'm like, there's too much going on, and I even know, you know, these people from watching them and, and meeting them, you know, and I and I I know their faces, so I don't really even have to know their names. But it's like the viewing audience. I'm thinking, God, unless you're writing stuff down, it's got to be a bit confusing. Yes, particularly with extra switches and all this sort of stuff too. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, yeah. we've, we've also got some players that we're not seeing anything of. I mean, you know, Kelly Wigglesworth, I think five episodes in a row now we've had no confessional from poor old Wigglesworth. And, um, you know, even Abby in the last couple of weeks has dropped off after being so, you know, relevant on our screens. But um, it's, it's fascinating, I guess, kind of the way we're seeing this whole second chance situation because it's the theme of the season, of course. You know, everyone's wanting their second chance. Everyone's coming into this wanting to achieve different things. And, I mean, we're seeing a lot of Savage, of course, and we, we sort of touched him a little bit. And uh, as you were saying uh, before, it's been a long time. He's, you know, wanting to come back out and play this different way. But he's kind of very bipolar. Like one episode, he's super happy. Things are going his way. But as soon as things don't go his way, he's telling people to, to get fucked and they're pieces of shits. And um, then he's back on top of the world again. And then he's got Sierra calling him out. So he's back at the bottom again. <laughs> like he, he's having one interesting little season. I feel savage at the moment. Yeah. Well, I think because if you look at all the guys that are left, Savage is the only like old school guy left that are mm -hmm. that's really playing. I mean, Stephen, I guess you can. He's not really old school though. I mean, he would token change with yeah, middle yeah. school, I guess. So I mean, you know, he he's you know way back you know played a long time ago, and I think as far as like he really at least what you the theme of what I'm getting is that he this is like really his second chance and you're and we're kind of seeing a second chance way more through him than anybody else 
you know so they that's why i think you know are seeing these like crazy emotions of like he's probably confused like well we played survivor this way back in the day and we played it a certain way and it was more about survival and it wasn't all this crazy you know switching and game playing and you know who we voting out you know with you know five episodes from now and who's going to do what and he's probably just you know all confused and he's still like you know, it's like when he's saying, like, I can't believe those are just lying bastards over there and they're, what, you know, deceiving, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's who you're playing with. I mean, everybody yeah. that knows the, the, the show nowadays is like, especially new schoolers, it's just like, it's not so much. I, I, this is what I kind of miss about Survivor 2, at least the old school. It's not so much about the adventurous Survivor anymore. It's more about just, okay, a bunch of people are on a remote location but they're playing like just this crazy strategy game as opposed to before it used to be like oh look how much look how starving they are look how much weight they're losing and they're eating rats and they're you know there's getting poured rain on and they're miserable you know and i'd like to see that 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 part of survivor as opposed to so much you know just who's gonna backstab who and you know what's what's the strategy now and who's aligning and you know it, i mean i guess they had to you know change it up to, to keep people's interest otherwise it might get boring but i do miss sometimes like i wish i could see a an old school version you know and right, i thought maybe I, agree. I, I i think that that i thought that this might have it in it at, at, at times but it seemed like it, at the beginning, I felt like they really were trying to combine those two elements at the beginning with a lot of the, you know, the Varners and the Wigglesworths. But now that all these strategies coming into it, you know, that's probably half the reason why that we're not seeing a Wigglesworth because she's not playing as hard and fast as these people are. So there's nothing to show of what she's doing out there. I, I yeah, I don't think that she's even. I don't even think she's aware of that that, that she has to do. She only played on season one. She got nothing to compare you know it too like so for her she's like well i just played the first season this is the way i played and this is how this show was was done so for her to see it in a different way yeah i it is bizarre either i don't know why she's not getting confessionals or not being shown or it, it, i don't know whether it's like she doesn't have a lot to say hmm. that's it's like uh, it's up to speed with nowadays survivor and I, I guess I'd have to go back to season one and see how many confessionals she had and really was, was what she had to say interesting hmm. in her season. You know, because, okay, she made it to second place, but did she do it in, in, in an interesting fashion back in the day? I don't know. Maybe that's just one of those things where, like, you know, if the producers are out there and they're asking you questions, everyone gets confessionals. Everybody. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't. They just don't show it. They don't show everybody's confessional. They just take the most interesting, or the most, you know, uh, the, the person that might be going getting, getting voted out. You know, they'll throw in a confessional form just so it's like, okay, you got some airtime. Which is frustrating so, because, particularly in a season like this where we, the public, voted these people on the show, so it's kind of like, well, they should really try and spread them out a little bit. I mean, yeah, of course, it's uh, exactly as you're sort of saying, like, people have the confessionals, but if there's nothing related to the episode, that's why they don't show it. But you look at some of the other people, like, we're not hearing barely anything from a Keith or Kimmy. I mean, these are entertaining people. Like, these are people that generally deliver great confessionals as well, but clearly because they're not really involved in the plot, you know, we're not seeing anything thing from them which is a shame right it's tough you know i mean it's tough to jam in you know especially in the beginning 20 people into a 45 minute <laughs> show mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like and i think it's one of those things where it happens every season i mean if i'm an editor sitting in there i'm like okay we have these people you know we need we know who goes first second third fourth all the way up into the merge we're gonna show those people a little bit more in the beginning of this of this season, as opposed to you know, we're, if, say, say Kelly, you know, Wigglesworth makes it all the way to the end. Well, guess what? You know, the last four or five episodes, we'll probably see a crap load of her. Mm -hmm. So then, all of a sudden, it'll all kind of even out. People at the end of the season, they'll go, "Oh yeah, I didn't see her in the beginning, but I saw a lot of her at the end." You know, like that, like that kind of you know. I mean, we saw a ton of armor, Barner, sorry. Mm -hmm. And you know, saw a ton of honor in the beginning. Why? Well, maybe the maybe the editors knew he was he's going home. You know, yeah. 
merge and let's show him a lot because he's a good character. So let's show him, you know. And it's hit and miss it's with like- seasons the way they do it too because, you know, people talk about the obvious winner's edit. Um, it was very heavy in your season. Um, I remember with, you know, everyone was calling that very early with Kim. But, like, they've, they've done it a few seasons recently, though. I feel they've they've really done it well. Look at Sam Wandel, Sarah a couple of seasons ago. I mean, it was very heavy Jeremy Josh, and it was kind of like, well, right. Jeremy and Josh going to win this. And then, bang, but straight after each other blindsided. Then it was like, well, you know, John's going to win this. He's gone. And then it was kind of like, well, Natalie finally got a bit of air time towards the end, and she obviously goes on to win it. So, that was, I think, very well edited, whereas last season it was sort of the Mike show, basically, for for a very large portion of it as well. So, it's, yeah. I mean, based on that, really, this season too, I mean, you know, I guess uh, your Spencers are there, your Savages, uh, your Jeremys, uh, people like this who are getting all the airtime and all the confessionals, but do you kind of feel right now there's somebody with a real strong winner's edit, or are they spreading it out quite well this season? I don't think there's someone with a real strong, well, you know, I mean... If I'm going to take the people that I've seen the most and that, that are, I guess, strategic and actually listen to what they say, you know, Jeremy is right up there, I would think. I still think that uh, even though I, you don't hear a lot from Kelly Wentworth, I think that she is up there. Mm-hmm. And she says things. I, she said something in this episode, something about, yeah, you know, there's only one winner or something. You know, I always try to grasp little pieces. Once in a while, they'll give you a little snip, you know. <laughs> if you a very, to yeah, very big winner's quote sort of people have been saying with that one for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, Tasha's still got a chance. I just, you know, I mean, I just, you know, they show Joe a lot, but I think they're showing Joe a lot because, you know, he, he, everyone loves Joe. <laughs> and it makes the show better with a guy like Joe on it. But I don't think Joe, you know, has a chance just because there's just, at some point, people are going to be like, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to be there with Joe if there's, you know, four tribals left. He's going to win everything, he's, you know, to go all the way to the end, and then he's just going to dominate. So it's like, then it always kind of happens like, well, who are we going to target, you know? So um, Joe would have to win everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, plus, as, as you said, people like Joe. The women love him. It's a man bun, yeah. I think, as well. Um, exactly, yeah, and it's good. For, that's good ratings. I mean, Joe's good ratings. You know, you got to show Joe. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I don't know if there's like a true winners edit yet. I think in this, these next. I mean, now that there's a merge, and you know, it's they, they're down to twelve, which to me, it's, merging at thirteen was crazy. That's the, the biggest merge of all time, and yeah, I don't. I like merge. I like smaller merges. I, I just feel like. A merge is like almost a reward. If you merge, say, like at eight or ten, it's like, oh yeah, we made it to the, you know, we're, we're that good, you know. As opposed to, oh, you merged at thirteen. I made the merge. Oh yeah, Jesus, you made it at thirteen. Like, I mean, only that's seven cr- people. That's- only seven people didn't make the merge. If you analyze that, which is quite crazy, actually, isn't it? <laughs> I know. So it's this, and it's, so it's, it's this. And this is a lot, you know, it's a lot to watch. It's a lot to happening, you know. I just think that they can, I think they should have, I don't know. I don't. I just wish they would have whittled it down uh, a little more. Yeah. But they have their reasons, I guess. Well, I think, like, because your season, obviously, um, you guys merged at a tribal council, but you then... Um, that was the only time that it ever happened, I think, from memory. Um, and Jeff mentioned this episode, it was the biggest tribal council they'd ever had. So right. that might have overtaken your season as the most number. Yeah, I don't know for, if that's It probably, well, probably did. We merged at, we merged at 12. So, yeah. And when we merged, I was just kind of shocked. It, when I was there, I, when when he said, okay, drop your rust, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Merge at 12. Hmm. It's way too, this is just too much, too many. You know, I guess, and too, it's for me. It felt like, you know, let's let's get this. T- like, you know, I was on a, a tribe that was winning, so I'm like th- thinking, like, okay, if we can whittle it down, or yeah, I just think it would have would have gone better. But for our season, I'm sure they sat back and they thought, okay, Colton's gone. Now we're back down to six guys, six girls, and let's just look at it that way. Yeah, which you know they. I keep telling people about our season. It's like always, they always, they start out in, they call it, men, you know, men versus women. 
but it it almost never was from day one. <laughs> you know, it never was the, the you know the women got together, but the men were never really together as one solid unit on mm-hmm. RC. It never really yeah. was. You know, so they merged us at twelve, and you know it was chaos from the beginning. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with this. It's like I'm kind of confused. Like I I have to rewatch like the end to see like who voted which way. <laughs> well, it was very much like that. No, I'm actually writing notes down kind of when you're seeing these two real alliances form. I'm like, okay, so they're with them, they're with them. So Joe's kind of the vote that they've got to get. And then it turned out not to be that way. It was kind of, um, you know, everyone went to, to Tash and then it was like you had these, what, group of four. So you had Kelly Wentworth, Sierra, Abby and Cass and then they're like, okay, we only need okay. one person because they're going to split the vote, which logically, good good move there. And, you know, they think they've got Spencer, so it looks like they're all good. But then at the end right. of the day, it didn't even get close to that because Kelly Wentworth voted for Cass, Sierra voted for Savage. Um, so there's clearly a yes. real, there's a moment there where... Kelly Wentworth or somebody there is like, okay, Spencer's not with us, so Kelly's voted for Cass just to save a butt, I guess, and play in favors. And well, or, or is there something we didn't see, we don't see? There's the conversation yeah. that we just don't see, and it makes us confused. So it's like someone may have spoken with with Wentworth, yeah, and she might have had a you know revelation. Okay, well, uh, I'm going this way. This is the smart move, you know, and we, and we just don't see. Yeah, because yeah, she was she I, was very I, I, much down with people, and like, what did she say in this episode? Straight away, like Keith, oh, definitely Keith's with me, and then she's with the minority four, and then she's back. Yeah, like as you said, like somebody's said something. So it, it was very interesting how that whole Kelly Wentworth situation happened in this episode. Right, it was a, a strange. Yeah, I, I and it's something that we don't we we don't know. It's just we have to. I, have to I right now I have to just guess. Like, why why did it? Why did she, you know, until I would actually have a conversation with her, I'd be like, you know, what, what was the reasoning? There's always an inside story, you know, people, you know, when I talk about my season, they'll say like, oh, well, you did this and this happened. I said, well, not really. You didn't see this conversation. You didn't see that conversation. Yeah. You know, and they, it, it looks one, only one way. People always ask me like, well, you know, how you got so fooled by when Kim told you about Mike and then you just blew up and she convinced you to vote him out. I said, that's just not true. It wasn't just one conversation that you saw on the television where she mentions to me about Mike and I blow up. Mike had been on my case from day one, you know, and he had been saying things about me from the for weeks. So it was it wasn't and and and. Jay had been saying things to me about him, and other people had been saying, like, you know, he's talking to you again. You guys just never saw that on television. So by the time I finally blew up, I was like, oh, Troy Sam blew up just because of one thing that Ken said. That's not true. Hmm. So it's like you can't, you don't see everything, you know. It's like, why'd you blow up? Like, well, because all of the things you didn't see. That's why I blew up. <laughs> you know, so like, so like with Wentworth, she could be having conversations with Jeremy, as far as we know, and we would still don't even see it. You know, yeah. she's like, well, you guys didn't see us. I had a conversation with her, and then she said this, and he said, da, 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 and he, I changed my mind, you know. It's like, it's even like with, what, I don't know really why Sierra voted for Savage. It, it, I mean, I know in a way why. Be, maybe she's still angry because of, you know, her, him saying like, well, we're going to use your name, you know, from last week. But why would she just throw out this just random vote? Like, it's, I mean, it's, who told her? Did she just do that on her own? Well, a theory with that, I guess, yeah, I mean, interesting you said you might have an idea, but I, I guess, I mean, thoughts that we were discussing last night in our episode, um, she knows, I guess, how Savage reacts, I guess, to having his name thrown out there. You know, he might be like a rumor, who the hell voted for me? Like, you know, um, very, very angry at that. So do you think that's kind of a way of her doing it, knowing that clearly Cass is going home? So, hey, let's stir the pot a little bit next next, <coughs> next time, excuse me, by pissing Savage off a little bit uh, post-Tribal Council. I think maybe I, I I still don't know if if I think she's the most savvy player hmm. that I that I've seen. I don't know if you know. I still don't. I <laughs> I just don't know um, if she. I think she, I think she thinks she is very strategic in her her ways, but I don't think that she is. Hmm. And I think that she is on. 
second chances by a little bit of luck. Hmm. You know, I mean, she did. She, w I don't think she would have been cast for Survivor on her own if she didn't have her mother's name. Yeah, but she, she, she wouldn't even be in this. She wouldn't even be in this season. Key focus on that, yeah, and it's it's fast. Like, I've always been indifferent with Sierra. Like, I have nothing against her. I've would never had her on the show actually. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of she's got a very strong fan base out there, and obviously that helped getting on the show too. But. I don't know, like, we, we've done a lot of analysis in terms of player rankings and things like that, and I've kind of never really been sold on Sierra overall as a player. Like, outside of her voting a mum out, I mean, in Blood vs. Water, she had a perfect opportunity to change the game up. She made a move one round too late, um, and had she done it a round earlier and targeted, um, I think it was Tyson that week, or gone against them, then the game would have changed. But she did it a week later, forced the rock drawer, and it went completely against it. So, I don't know, like, it was. it's very strange particularly also this episode. I mean, her calling out and sort of throwing Savage under the bus really randomly at the same time as Cass is going off. I mean, that... Right that, in front of everybody. That's yeah. just like a, that's not a very savvy move. Like, that to me says to me that you've really not... You don't really know Survivor and how it works. It's like, you know, have you been watching the show or did you just, like, randomly get picked because, you know... Y y your mom played and then you know you had the right personality because you they know you'd go against your mom and then you made one dramatic move and voted out your mom and that's so because you're known as for a dramatic you know for the drama that wow you're going to get chosen for second chance because you're one of the most recent seasons hmm. i don't know i just you know i just feel like hey I, and that's just her gameplay like i said i think she's probably a sweet person i think she comes across as a really nice person but as far as playing survivor i don't think that she should have just called out savage and you don't do that in front of everybody because you know whether you're right or wrong a group just sees that as drama as and sees that. and then and then when she starts you know kind of spouting out like you know we got to play to win you know in the tribal fight in the tribal council you know we're, are you here to win or what you we're here to do this you know it's like oh man when you when you start talking like that, man, you just put a giant target on your back. Mm. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, it's, I think so. You just you just target yourself. Some people just you gotta you just have to, you know. Maybe that's why Wigglesworth is not doing anything. He's just like, I want zero targets. So I'll just do I'll do about as little as possible and say absolutely nothing. Well, like it's, it's, it's kind of like with your season, like with the situation with you. I mean, we, we obviously famously saw you with, you know, this is my island and obviously the situations that happened at um, that challenge. But really outside of that, we didn't really see you sort of go off too much at people, you know, publicly. So it was kind of really at challenges. And was that really the case sort of from what we didn't see as well? You didn't really kind of blow up too much at camp as opposed to challenges? No, that was that was on. I mean, that was on purpose. I didn't want to. I didn't want to stand out. So I just knew I was being eyeballed from the beginning, and and just by a few of the things that people would say, like, "Oh, you just look like a survivor," you know, and they see me go out and swim or fish, and they, go, "Oh, this guy," and I can just tell, like, "Oh shit, these people are seeing me as like you know, like a you know, an older Joe or something." So I'm like, I better tone it down, and I'm not going to make any. You know, suggestions to anybody about what we do so I let Colton go on his own tangent and feel like he's in the lead and make his deal um, I let Tarzan harp on people you know he was the one who came up to the leaf and said you know you're bad you know we're gonna vote you out and we're doing this so, so I yeah I stayed back I mean I I I never sat out a challenge I wasn't one of the one of those guys but I uh, definitely wasn't taking the lead as far as like what we were going to do. You can see, if you rewatch at some point, you'll even see me like if Jonas walks up to the girls in the beginning, he'll talk to them first, and I'll let everybody else talk first, you know. But by the time I, you know, got my back up against the wall, there, I I was with absolutely no one. So I thought I've got nothing to lose. I might as well try to intimidate these people and yell, this is my island and don't F with me and you can't be, you know, so that was, and, and that was in a sense the show, you know, I mean, I was angry. I didn't like the way that they were kind of being smug, but it was a little bit like, I think it's funny because people think like, guy, you really... You're a lot nicer in person than you were on that show. You're such a jerk. It's like that was just that was like 
five minutes of one episode. Everyone, well, how can you think I'm like <laughs> this I think jerky, memory, so I think it's a cool guy. You know, it's like I really, if you watch yeah. the show, I'm a funny guy. Like I say funny stuff, and I'm like happy go lucky. I'm such a you know adventurous. I like I was so happy to be there. It's like. <laughs> It's like it's classic to watch people's reactions and like that's what they remember. This is my island. <laughs> and you said you said it you said it earlier too in the season from memory. You I didn't said, just say it at that point. You said it a few times in the season. Oh, I said it. I I, I said it like four or five times. I said it more than they actually showed even. Mm. And I even said I even said this is our island when I was with when I got switched to Solani. Mm. And I and I, I had everyone, you know, I bounced a coconut and broke a final thing and whatever. I think it was for the ice cream social or whatever. And I told everyone to run up on the stage and join me. And I said, this is this is our island. I mean, I was saying that from the beginning, this is my island. But it, in the first time I said it, it was kind of like I was joking around saying something about Tarzan was like, you know, uh, I don't know what it was, but it's like, you know, he, this guy's name is Tarzan. I said, this, I'm Troyzan. This is my island. But I just said it kind of like under my breath almost, you know. But I said it in the interview before I even made it out to the to the island. So they actually showed that in, in some of the previews before our show aired. You know, right. they showed Tarzan yelling. Then they showed me grabbing the sand. This is saying, this is my island. <laughs> so, yeah, I said, I said it a lot. <laughs> it's like, but I said it kind of, in a sense, jokingly, but also like, I wanted to. I want. I wanted it to be like, you know. I'm here to really play and to win. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't say it to be egotistical. I just was like, I finally made it, and it's like I just don't think people realize. Like for what you know, trying for eleven years, and you know, sending in twenty two or twenty three or how many t tapes I sent in. By the time I made, it, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to let this opportunity. You know. Pass me by. This is my island. Finally, <laughs> you know? I just I just have to say it every time we get you or anybody from One World, and you've heard me say this plenty of times. But I just I need to do this for our listeners because I I, I every time every year and every season that goes past with the One World love, I'm I'm out there still doing it. And I yeah I rewatched your season again earlier this year, and it's just there's there's just nothing about your season I don't love. I just. I just such a I I just cannot understand the hate for it that why it gets it and we actually did our our we do every year we rank the seasons on our show with everybody that works on the show and I bumped One World up to second on my list this year only behind All Stars that's how much I love your season oh Troy Jeez, oh yeah. my god man, that's I, crazy and wow that was you're like just one, one of the yeah <laughs> well that was just after I think the rewatch earlier this year and. I just, right. yeah, and it's just so many moments of it and just such a great season and I just enjoy it so much. And people listening to this, if you have not rewatched One World, do it. Just watch it, appreciate it, and not, you know, just for the gameplay, but the characters and the people and like, you're just, your cast is amazing and it's, it's gold. I, sorry, I'm just, I, I just always I, have to spurt about it, Troy Zand. One World, second best. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I think our season's better than what people say. I just... More for like the entertainment value of watching it. If you, I mean, we have a lot of characters on yeah. our show, and if you go back, it's like, you know, and if you look at the amount of people that have been considered and actually replayed, it's like our season's, a, you know, a lot more than, than most. It's like Colton's been back, Monica's been back, Kat's been back. I've been asked back three times. I'm sure Kim's going to play again. Chelsea's been asked. Chelsea also made it almost made it on the second chances. She was up for like, you know, the final uh, 18 up until the last, you know, week. Mm -hmm. um, and Sabrina as well. So it's like, you know, our cast is, <laughs> we, we had some nuts, you know, Tarzan, he was crazy. And uh, Alicia and Colton doing their thing, you know, uh, Kim, p people think she's one of the most dominating players to, to, to play. Um, you know, uh, Leaf sleeping in a box. <laughs> <laughs> movie star Jonas Leaf now, of course, too, with Paul Blart Mall Cop. I mean, let's not forget movie star Keith, uh, Leaf. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. It's like, you know, um, uh, J J Jonas was a pretty funny guy, mm -hmm. the, the, the chef. And, uh, yeah, so it's like, I think as the years go by, it kind of is, stepped up a little it's moved yeah. up a few notches you know like it Definitely. used to be oh yeah well, one world i think people 
are mad at One World because it was just so predictable towards the end. That's why they don't like it. They don't want to watch, you know, just some predictable, boring season. And actually, even though I played in the season, I still get a little bit pissed off that that it was a boring last like four like three or four episodes mm. well i should i mean i got well wait well i know i got voted out on day 30 and there was two episodes after i got voted out mm. um and and even the producer said oh geez i don't know about this season troy it's, you got voted out i mean not like saying like i was you know a big thing in the show but i was really the only guy that was trying to play to win and actually you know to take on kim and they're like this is going to be a little bit boring because it's going to be very predictable because no one of these these people aren't doing anything <laughs> they're not yeah. doing anything to make it interesting and so i think it's like that's what left people saying like oh i don't like this season which is i remember yeah. that when it was on because like you know first time i watched it i hated kim couldn't stand her and i think i've said that to her on the show before like it just and i remember watching oh god fuck kim's one yeah whatever but then like yeah like rewatches multiple rewatches and i think you're right the years do it a favor i think there's a that's the case with a lot of seasons of survivor that are universally hated and then gradually like you know you look at a, a thailand that's come very full circle now and that people actually don't mind it now um nicaragua was fairly well hated because it came after heroes versus villains but that's getting a bit of love now vanuatu to probably the only real season that still gets a lot of shit is Redemption Island, and I don't ever see that coming into people liking that anymore. But um, yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. And I also, I always I hear that they don't like Fiji, but I, I guess yeah, I'm gonna have uh, to watch. I'm gonna have to rewatch Fiji and season. see what. I mean, there's no really season to me that stands out as like bad. Like, mm. oh my god, I really didn't like it. I mean, I I pretty much liked all the seasons. I although I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of San Juan del Sur. For mm. just, I don't know. There was just something missing in that season to me. I yeah, a lot of people like- aren't fans of that. Yeah, it's it's funny that, and it's kind of like I'm probably a bit like that with Worlds Apart. Um, I that's the only season I've never rewatched. I mean, okay, it's only the newest season before this current <laughs> one. So, but um, yeah, yeah like when Sam Wandel Surf finished, I was quick to rewatch that. Whereas Worlds Apart, I've really got no desire to rewatch it. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy to sort of focus on this one at the moment, and um... yeah, yeah, this one's been. I mean, surprisingly, and I'm, and people are like, "Oh, are you bitter?" I'm like, "No, I'm not bitter. Like, not anymore." I mean, so I'm, I mean, I never was bitter. I was, I was, I'm more just like, you know, sad. I'm more like yeah. di- di- very, just, you know, highly disappointed that I that I you know c- could be out there with these people that I know. But as far as the show, I think it's been really good for me. I've 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 had a blast watching it. I really do like watching what's happening. People are playing. Um, it's um it's you know it's been entertaining for me. Uh, Varner to me was hilarious entertainment, and it's like um, Fishback in the beginning, you know, getting all crazy looking Riles, and he got all emotional, thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna play the same. The same thing's gonna happen. I don't know what to do." And Spencer Spencer's been good. Savage being kind of like. Uh, bipolar <laughs> he's he's been pretty good um jeremy's been jeremy's a good you know good you know as far as like you know just a good like not good guy like a mm-hmm. nice like it seems like he's intelligent has a cool head but you know most firemen uh, kind of are like that um abby marie even though she's abby maria she you know she's created some drama it's fun to see what she's stirring up Cass has been cast. You know, she stirred up uh, some junk. Keith still, when you get to see him, at least, you know, <laughs> he, he's somewhat funny. And Joe's been great, too. Joe's Joe. Do you ever, Joe keeps winning. It's like, you know, I just, maybe in Joe's mind, he's like, you know what? I know I'm, a, I know I'm good at challenges. I know that people know I'm good at challenges. Why should I just, I mean, why should I not try? I'm going to, you know, I might as well go for it. You know, if I if I don't, they're going to say I'm I'm just, you know, I'm 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 eventually going to win anyway, and I'm just saving my energy. So he's probably just thinking, "What the hell? I'll just go for it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I remember actually last season thinking that he could be like the first person to win every single challenge when he started off dominant, and then you know we jokingly said that with Mike, and well, he basically won every single challenge right at the end, didn't he? So you know, it's um, it's fascinating to kind of see that. What was there kind of any position on this season? Uh, maybe say like a, a Terry Dietz that you kind of pictured yourself like that was your spot so to speak like Terry got in over you or Varna and like were you at any point kind of yeah, yeah, picturing no, I, I, how you would have all, gone in that point? Well yeah all the all the older guys there's there's four guys that I that I felt like I you know like Savage, Dietz, Keith and uh, Varner mm-hmm. uh, maybe even maybe even Vetus I felt like you know 
okay, those guys, oh God, well, no, okay, they, they, they take my spot, you know, as I are, you know, I feel like, you know, when I was out there in the audience, you know, and there's, and just calling out the names, you know, I, I was right in the front next to Tasha and, um, I just was like, okay, here we go. I mean, I, I just, I was, <laughs> I, I really, at that point, I just got a bad feeling. I almost felt like, okay, I know I'm not going. Mm -hmm. So by the time Jeff gets to me, it's like, I'm not going to act like, you know, all sad, like they want me to, you know, and be like depressed. <laughs> um, when Keith got called, I just wasn't sure Keith was going to make it because I just thought like if America's really voting and like these people are like and it's all about Twitter and and social media, it's like you know heck, Deeds just joined Twitter, so did Savage and so did Keith and and um, and and uh, Varner kind of as well. Like how all of a sudden it's like if they got like a thousand followers, they're gonna you're telling me that they're getting all the votes hmm. from like and it's all based on social media because. I mean, if CBS really wanted it to be based on like solely America's vote, I don't know if it was if America could vote or if the world could vote. We voted. Um, we, I know we could. I don't know other passes in the world. So yeah. you guys could you could yeah. vote in Australia. Yeah, it worked for us. So we voted every day. So yep. Right. So okay. So but and that's the case. It's like um, I feel like. The people that watch the show, they only got one, you know, 10 second clip of Jeff talking about a second chance on the sh actual show. Unless you went online, you weren't, you wouldn't, you were never informed that much. I mean, we made TV commercials, each one of us that said, you know, go full for me, but that, I thought they would play on the air in between uh, on commercials or something. He, they only said it one time. So it's like, you know, I mean, I still have my own ideas about this vote and mm -hmm. and the vote and and the producers and CBS. You know, who had a hand in it and who didn't. I just feel like I just I'll never believe it was just a vote based on you know uh, the fans. Yeah, yeah. I so, yeah. I mean, if you look at the cast. You're telling me that America and the rest of the world perfectly picked this cast. I mean, with the demographic that they have. You know, two Asians, two African Americans. You know, two young guys, two young girls. Gay guy. You know, old two old guys. I mean, the way it's perfectly cast every season. Hmm. I mean, come on, it's it, it. You know, you've got a Hispanic in there. Come on, it, it, it's like there's no way CBS is going to say like, okay, we're going to leave it in the hands of our voters, and then um, we're going to have all old white guys play and not yeah. one. That's that's not gonna fly that it's would never have diversity happen. in there for sure that it's, would never happen in a million years people would be in, a, in a, an uproar yeah exactly you know? it, it would be crazy which is a shame yeah. i mean you can see why they've got to do that but i completely agree with you because no i, I see why they did it i mean yeah. i know I mean, my own reason i know why they did this vote thing the vote was to hype up you know the the survivor world and get every single one of us you know, telling you know, social media about it, and then the world knows about the second chance and Survivor. All of a sudden, Survivor, Survivor, Survivor over the summer because in the summer it dies down. So yeah. they need to keep the, and it's all for ratings. It's television. It's a show. You know, so this vote is like hyped up the show big time. It made it very interesting for everybody. You know, all oh, these people are going to go on a live television show and be announced. And it's like it's going to be, you know, such a dramatic scene and da da da, and you know, get out and vote and da da and all this stuff. It's like so. It's you know, well, to it'd be me, fascinating it's like, if they released the results. I think like, and they never would, but you know, we we it, did it, a we did sort of a poll on our website, sort of when the vote was on, just to kind of see what who people were voting for and everything along those lines. And I mean, just quickly looking at kind of that result, I mean, looking at the male perspective, you were 11th. So you kind of were 0 0.01 of a percent off right. the top 10, basically. So you were narrowly outside, but just looking at the males who made it, uh, Shane Powers was clearly number one on our list of people who they were voting for. He didn't even make the cast. So, and right. Jim Rice was on our final list as well. And you, you were just behind Jim Rice. And if you look at the female list here quickly, uh, T-Bird looks to be the only one there that was on our list, but didn't make it. So 
it's you know mm. like Wu was a huge shock like you know everyone was sort of in uproar why Wu got voted on and obviously everyone was very angry that Shane didn't get on so you know it was kind of yeah it's sort of very interesting kind of on how it all turned out basically yeah I just I just feel like I mean there's you'll we'll never know the vote because there's no way that CBS or Jeff Probst is going to reveal that there probably was not there were votes but you know they those votes were not used to pick the people yeah it, 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 they might have had a percentage of like listen you know we're going to put these names out here and if this person gets uh, you know over 10% okay they're in if they don't get you know they'll they'll be out i mean i just i just feel like they they had they they had the cast picked before the people would vote anyway and they they even told you that when they when they first released it because it said on the website when you went to vote the CBS as well as the public has an interest in the votes or something about you know we have votes or we have the final say and everyone that's you know a super fan that goes online were in an uproar and saying like well I'm not going to vote now because if CBS has a say in it then they're there they have a say in I don't my my vote doesn't even matter hmm. so they took that line out well, that doesn't mean anything. They can take the line out. It doesn't mean they still can't do it. It's their show. They can do whatever they want. They don't need to. There's Legally, they don't need to put in a quote that says, we have a vote. It's my show. I can do what I want with it. You know, Les Moonves isn't going to say, like, okay, guess what? Take out that line, but uh, but then we're going to really tell the truth about how we picked, uh, how this is uh, CBS. It's Survivor. It's the number one reality show on television it makes them millions and millions of dollars worldwide why would they gamble and say like we're going to just have the public pick and we don't get a say in it and if by chance they pick the wrong people and our show drops to like you know 50th on the on the nielsen ratings list and we lose our show that's what we're gonna do never hmm I mean, I spoke with, with Lynn Spillman about that. I said, you can't convince me of that. I, I told her, have Jeff Probst call me right now and tell me the truth. Like, that's just, there's no way. Yeah. I said, you know, I mean, I almost didn't fly out. I said, I, unless he calls me, I'm not flying out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's it's the process and everything with it. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's, it was, the process was stupid. It's like, you're telling me, like, if you really wanted it to be a vote f- by the public that watches it, not the, because it's one thing to have super fans vote because they know every last detail about Survivor. Mm-hmm. You know, you and and the say the 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 twenty five thousand or fifty thousand real super fans out there that like are on podcasts and everything else. That's a small percentage of the, actually the TV watching audience here is like ten million. Yeah. So if you want 10 million people to go vote CBS, then have them go and make the vote easy. So if and make it fair to the people that are being voted on. If if my friends and family go to vote for me, then they get to the voting and it says, "Well, you have to register first. Okay, that takes time. Now you you not only have to vote for Troy's, you have to vote for nine other guys and your vote won't count until you click nine other people." Mm-hmm. But if my people don't know those faces they're clicking on people that they don't know so for example then if if it, it, tell me how this is fair and i said this to, to to casting i said if i go to you know social media like you guys are forcing us to do so we get votes and i go to one of my sports illustrated girls like kate upton and so has got three million followers i say kate will you go out and we tweet go vote for my buddy troy's and get on survivor sure she tweets out to three million people, go vote for Troy. So, for example, at this point, Savage would have five hundred votes and I would have a hundred votes in my in my you know poll. Mm-hmm. All those people go to vote, say five hundred of five hundred of them go to vote and they want to vote for me. They don't know who Savage is, but they click my name and they click Savage's just because they don't know who he is because they're forced to vote. So five hundred of those people just voted for Savage. Yeah. Now he has six hundred. And now I have 500. How is that fair? Yeah, I yeah, completely not, agree with not, you. It's not, those, are my, those are my voters and those are my votes, not his. Nobody, they're nobody else's. 
and it, it was so how, how that fair vote that's not that doesn't make any it makes zero sense that's not how you vote for a president you don't vote no, for exactly nine and it's it's kind of you got to that point i find when you were voting every single day where you, you know like you, you generally had your definite go-to's but there were time exactly where you might have run out like i can't remember whether it was i think it was mainly like some of the female ones you got kind of like you ticked your seven and then you were like, oh, right. well, who are my final three? You know what I mean? And it was kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, I'll tick these ones. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. And if if they do this a second time, which, you know, Survivor, they will probably. I mean, they brought back yeah. Blood vs. Water straight away. Every single right. one they've had, they've always brought back. So you can be certain they'll do this again. Whether or not right. they change it up or not, it will be int- But they probably won't. They'll probably stick by it, won't they? I'm sure they'll do a second chance. I mean, I, I heard of, a, of a, the... the- that um, I actually saw on, on Rob Sesternino's. He's, he's he's like I think they'll come up with a you know a blue collar, white collar, no collar, all star version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'd like that. <laughs> I yeah. actually was I actually was on his no collar tribe. <laughs> so I'm like I like your no collar. I was like, it was like me, Shane, Ozzy, Abby Marie. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I was like, it was like, you know, the, the, the nutball. I'm like, hey, I, li- I like that idea. I'm sure they'll bring that back, you know, yeah. and I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll have a second. There's plenty of second chance people out there. I mean, they, oh, they've hey. missed, you know, I mean, I think RC should play. I think Holly Hoffman should play. Is the one. Yeah. It's like, there's a lot of, I mean, Chelsea could have played from our season again. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's some. Um, a lot of a lot of people out there that you know. How many? How, how many? How many? They got to choose from four hundred something. Four hundred and fifty-nine, I think, off the top of my head. Four hundred sixty. That haven't played a second time. Oh, that haven't. Oh, yeah. They went. Yeah, down to uh, four hundred, three hundred ninety. So yeah, exactly. It's. I mean, heck, it could be. It could. They could. They could. Okay, well, then it could be second chances versus third chances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? so many yeah, options, Troy. There's, there's no yeah. way this show is ending anytime soon. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> no. It, it still makes some money. It's still, it's still, it's still a big show. People are still fascinated by it. You know, as long as and, Jeff Probst has a Botox account and um, he's he's still ready to go. Um, well, I think you, they're still laughing for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's still it's still gonna stay. And happy yeah. birthday to Jeff too. It was Jeff Probst's birthday I think, yesterday or the day before. Oh, so. that's- <laughs> oh, okay, I, I did, he, he just, just Jeff listen to your show. <laughs> oh, absolutely every day. Um, he he texts me every day. Oh, good episode, Ben. Well done. But I still won't do an interview on your show. Um, well, then he'll be able to reveal the vote to you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's when we get him on the show, Troy. First question I'll ask him. Um, tell us the result of the, the second yeah, chance poll. Like, I mean, he already said that on. I think on the live, he's like, you know, we'll never reveal the vote. I'm like I, I laughed. I said because there is there is there's nothing there. <laughs> the website you like every time you click submit it didn't do anything. Doesn't, you can't reveal something that doesn't exist. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, we've got some list of questions here. We've got a couple and I'll get to our final five questions here in terms of um thoughts on winners and all that season. Um James Schaefer. Hello James, thank you for your question. Um, he says, yes, as he's watching this season and sees all the snakes like Fishback and Wentworth, Cass, would he, Troyzan, that's you, uh, had been aware of this if you were there? So I'm guessing he's asking, would you have been aware of the snakes this season? <laughs> that's a bit oh, of a broad yeah, question. A hundred percent. I mean, you know, I, I, I knew that, that Wentworth were talking, she was talking to certain people on the outside that are very snakeish, you know. I I I know that she's very. I, from her season, San Juan del Sur, I, I knew that she was very intelligent, and I could tell that she was strategic. So, I would be very aware of her with Cass. You know, Abby Maria. I don't think she's very strategic, but I I would be aware of her just because it's like I I don't I could I wouldn't know you know which way, uh, she, you know she's moving <laughs> each day. You know mm-hmm. what what is she going to switch her. Her ideas and her thinking, so, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, there, I, I would have very, been very uh, aware of Shireen as well. I would have been very cautious with her. Um, yeah. Some people I would have been, I would have trusted more. I think I would have trusted Kimmy more. Mm-hmm. I, I would have trust, I would trust Wentworth for sure. Um, a little bit more than, 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 than most. I think I might have even trusted Monica a little bit more. But the other girls, I don't know, they all seem a little, a little snakeish. Fishback, f- Fishback, Fishback for sure. He's, yeah, he, he, yeah. he, he's, he, he knows way. T- he's way too. 
uh, squirrely, but even even Spencer, mm. he just seems the looks on his face, man. I just think he gives. <laughs> I, I just think he looks paranoid. <laughs> I don't know, man. He doesn't make me feel comfortable. <laughs> we we had condescend, condescending Spencer this this week. You know, I'm speaking to him in Joe language. Football yeah. plays. He'll understand that. Like, when do we ever think Joe's dumb, Spencer? Like, <laughs> oh, I know that's good. I'm sure that uh, that's always fun to to watch because you're like <laughs> when when joe watches that he's thinking oh that's really he thinks he, that's what he said okay all right okay yeah, it's the man it. bun it's the man bun um yeah <laughs> have you ever had a man bun troy i have a man bun as we speak my hair is yeah. like super long it's like crazy long it's like, i don't know it's like I, I haven't cut it since the the finale it's like it's it was too long then i don't know i'm just <laughs> <laughs> get, la- get lazy, I guess. By the time I make it back out, I'll be the, the true Tarzan. <laughs> you'll, you'll take over the actual Tarzan to be Tarzan yourself, and then, exactly. yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, just a couple of comments here. Chris Rockefeller Grant says, I don't understand how he didn't get in one of the best ever. There you go. You've got a fan there. Um, and Zachary Chong also says, uh, in capitals, this is my island. Hashtag <laughs> Troy Zan was robbed. I enjoy Troy Zan and think he's a good player. So there's a couple of people that that's, voted for that's you. Nice. Oh, that's nice of those guys. What's those guys' names again? Uh, Chris and Zachary. Chris and Zachary. Yeah, well, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. It was always, always good to hear, like, you know, I, I hear that more than, than, I hear other, than I hear negative stuff. So it's like, part of me is like, well, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other one here, uh, uh, Dow Phil Theody Mapogu says, who owns this island at this point? Hashtag, this is my island. Oh, who, who owns the island at, that, at this point? Uh, I can, let's go through who I think. Uh, God, it's tough because, well, I mean... I guess you'd have to say Joe hmm. because you know of, of you know it be, of just because he's still there and then he's actually just been dominating as far as like doing everything. Like no one, Joe. I'd say, I say Joe and Joe, Jeremy, Kelly Wentworth. They're the top as far as like owning the island. They're, they're, they're the, the, the 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 triple. <laughs> the triple. The triple owners. <laughs> the triple owners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you to everyone who sent in their questions. Always appreciate it each week. And remember to stay tuned to our uh, social media and website to see who we have on each week. But that leads us perfectly into our final set of questions. So I don't actually have in front of me here um, sort of your predictions on previous seasons uh, in terms of uh, who you've tipped to win and all that. I haven't quite got that far. But uh, this leads perfectly into this question right now, Troy Zan, in terms of where we are right now. We're pretty much smack bang in the middle of this season. Who is your tip to win Survivor Cambodia second chances? I, I got, I'd have to say Jeremy because he's he's in a good position. I think that that he doesn't have uh, too many people talking about him as being a threat. He's got an idol, right? Mm-hmm. And he's got an idol. Yep. So and he has, he has an idol at the merge, which is a big deal, you know. And it, the longer he can keep it in his pocket, the more days that go on, it's better for him, you know. Uh, I I'd have to say him. Him and 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 Wentworth second so Wentworth. far. So Wentworth, if I was asked your dark horse, would that be Wentworth, or would you put? No, it's else? not. No, a dark horse to me is would be, would be like someone that I, it's unexpected to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a, a dark that, that 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 just might. Dark horse would be Keith. Keith. Oh, that would yeah. be a great win. How would that be for a win, Keith? Oh my God, <laughs> just Keith. Can you imagine the speech? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I, 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 I can't imagine winning this game, Jeff. Like, oh, no, oh, gosh darn it! <laughs> I know. It's like I never thought I'd get here in three county fairs, but got, gosh darn it, I did it, and I swear to you, got I'll spend the money right. Go out and give me uh, some moonshine, and let's all celebrate. <laughs> the uh, the <laughs> so best. We it was hilarious with Keith. We actually we did exit interviews during Sam Wandel Sir and when we did Keith's he he was out I think hunting for deer or he was hunting for something. And then when we got him on pre game for this season, he's like, Well, I remember talking to you, Ben, last I was out shooting and here I'm talking to you again. Like that's it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> like, I know. He's just it's so true to his character. He's just oh, classic. He's I mean he's brilliant. just he, Oh my God, that's too—he's too funny. I, yeah, I mean, I enjoy watching Keith. I mean, yeah. he's—he's he, he's funny. 
He would be fun to play Survivor with. Um, who's next to go? Who's going to get voted out next week? Mm. Who's going next? Could be Sierra. Sierra? Okay, yeah. Mark her down. Um, now, this is a tough Sierra, one. Sierra, and who else is like, I'm trying to think, what, I'm just trying to think who's with who, like, who voted which way, and then I, I could tell you probably better. <laughs> you know, Sierra, maybe maybe Fishbach, if people get too nervous about that guy, hmm. if he starts squirrely. Yeah. He wants to go for that big Joe move. It could all flick back against yeah, him. And yeah, he, he could, yeah. If he starts talking, you know, really a lot of strategy and being kind of paranoid, people will be aware of that and they're like, oh, okay, Fishbach, sorry, buddy. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Now, this is this is a tough question because um, obviously the, the straightaway answer that I know you would answer by uh, asking this question is yourself, but I'm going to forbid you from answering yourself for this one, Troy Zan. Uh, which player from your season that hasn't already come back for a second time do you think most deserves a second chance besides yourself? Oh, my God. That's the hardest question you just asked. <laughs> you, 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 you know what I want to say. <laughs> You know whose island it is. Come yes, on. I do. I do. Yes. <laughs> I, even before I arrived, everyone. You know, it's funny. People are talking about, like, uh, Varner told me, it's like pe they were actually asking people to say, like, this is my island out there. Yeah. Right. And and Varner said, I'm not going to say it. That's, that, that belongs to Troy's hand. He said, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Those, but, but, okay, from my season, that ha that hasn't, so it can't be Kim either because she's won, right? Uh, well, but we'll go, yeah, second chance rules, so we, we can't, yeah. Kim's, second chance rules. Kim's out, Carlton's out, Monica's out, Kat's out, and uh, you're Uh, jeez, uh, um, oh, let's go through, who, who deserves, or who would I like to see? G give me, give me a, one of both, I, why not? <laughs> I, okay, so I think that, uh... Oh, going through guys. Okay, so who, who who I'd like to see would be would be Tarzan. Yes, that would yes. be hilarious. Oh, so good. Um, who I think deserves, and you'd probably be surprised by this. I think that Matt, the the rooster, deserves to go back. Okay. I just just solely on the fact that I think that he, uh, I think that he deserves it because he he's he. I think he's very passionate about. It. I think. He probably probably more than he leads on, and he seems more intelligent than anybody else as far as want, playing. And I and, and who I think it would mean more to him hmm. than it, than anybody. I was gonna say Chelsea. I was gonna say Chelsea, but I don't know. If she, I don't know. If she's just so into it as much as like he would be. And then the fact that he didn't make it to the merge, I think he. I think he deserves that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I we've had Matt on a couple of times, actually, and I, I enjoy speaking to Matt, and I think Matt, it, like, in speaking to him out of the game compared to what we saw, was very different, and obviously you would know very that more so knowing him personally as much as you do, so, yeah. No, yeah I, he's different outside the game. I, I even told him, I said, I wish I would have known, dude. I would have played with you for sure. I just, you know, just, I saw the way that you kind of were strutting around, and you didn't, and you just didn't come and talk to me first. If, if you would have talked to me, we'd been playing, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, I, I just felt like, and what he said to me at the finale, you know, he came up, he thought I was actually going to go on uh, on Survivor um, fans versus favorites. That's the big rumors. So he was, you know, he congratulated me and he got really emotional. And I'm like, you know, and I, so at that point, I really knew that the kind of the game meant more to him than anybody else. So I, I feel like, yeah, if, if Matt actually made it, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy for the guy. That'd be good, yeah. I like that. Good answer. Uh, final question for you, Troy Zand. Out of all the players this season, and again, doesn't have to be who's left in the game. It can be one who have already left the game. Who do you feel is uh, playing most similar to how you played on Survival One World? <laughs> oh God, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm going through the, how I who uh, how I played uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, so far, so far, mm -hmm. he's kind of playing a little bit under the radar. But I think he's, but I think he has the bit, the ability to really to turn it on and and get cranked up. And I think if if he got his back turned up against the wall, that he'd maybe get fired up and scream out a few. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. I could say. I could so. say that. I could say that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. 
done. Troy Zan, perfect. You've done well, mate. Really appreciate your time on the show. It's always a pleasure having you on this show, no matter what the circumstance, and you're always welcome back. And um, yeah, we say I this every it. time. You're going to be back on Survivor one day, mate. And um, look, just make sure that we're your first point of call to, to break the news when you're on the show. How about that? 100%, dude. I mean, I'll be with you guys for, for a long time. I, I, I the, the minute I make it on, uh, you'll, you'll be the first to know. And, uh, actually I'm, uh, I'm going to be actually traveling down to Oz in January. Oh, where about, whereabouts are you coming? Please tell come to I'm Tasmania. Gonna, Please come to Tasmania. <laughs> I, I'm kind of, I'm doing a photo shoot, uh, for like 10 days, but I think it's going to be more like, um, the Gold Coast is that like yep. like north of Sydney, right? Yeah, that's sort of yeah, about an hour's flight from Sydney. Yeah, Queensland. That's that's yeah, pretty more, standard place for photos. Very very picturesque. Yeah, well, it's, it looks gorgeous. You know, shooting a bunch of of swimsuit girls. Oh, poor man, <laughs> Jeez, such a hard <laughs> life. <laughs> Yeah. And there we go. Troy Zan Robertson. Always fun. Love having Troy Zan on. And um, apologies for always getting my. Um, you know, happiness going for one world. I just, I have to gloat. I love one world and I'll always defend it. So, um, maybe I don't apologize. Watch it. Do as you're told. Um, now, as I'm telling you what to do, maybe I'll tell you to listen to more Survivor Oz. Why not? The website, survivoroz.com, uh, all the interviews, all the recaps, everything's there. One stop shop. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Easiest way, of course, to get these episodes to your device. And, uh, if you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. You can stay up to date with, uh, what's happening on the show. Oz Topsy, uh, this week's, of course, is already up and ready to go. Uh, next couple won't be live and uh, more than likely, sadly, won't feature me. Probably not sadly, actually. Let's be honest, you'll probably be happy about that. So uh, Noah, I believe, will t- be taking the reins for the next couple of Oz Topsies. So um, stay tuned for that. In terms of our recaps, um, we, we sort of loosely know who's coming on, but obviously, as you've kind of found out in the last few weeks, schedules change. Um, sadly, sometimes people are scheduled in and they have to change at last minute, so we have to get other people in. We're bumping things around so we're sort of not forward announcing too much in terms of who we've got on Uh, i will say that we are hoping hopefully next week but in the next couple of weeks to have two people come on to do a dual recap and this is very exciting this one because i don't know if these two have ever been on an episode together uh since heroes vs villains uh please somebody correct me if i'm wrong uh we are hoping to have on at the same time from survivor china and survivor heroes vs villains courtney yates and from survivor pearl islands and survivor heroes vs villains sandra diaz twine we love them on heroes vs villains so having them on a combination would be great obviously courtney uh well she had pg on She's already gone, uh, and Sandra obviously working with Savage, and Courtney, of course, has connections with Fishback as well, so um, a bit of connections there, which would be interesting. Might be next week. We're hoping that will still happen, so please stay tuned to see if that will happen. Uh, also, a few others that we've got lined up. T-Bird, sadly, robbed of a spot on this season. Um, she's hopefully lined up in the coming weeks. We are also hoping to have um, John and Jacqueline coming on together from Survivor Someone. They'll sir, talk a little bit about Jeremy, a little bit about Keith, about Kelly Wentworth there as well. Well, favourite of ours, of course, Purple Kelly Shin. Well, who else better to talk about Purple Kelly Wigglesworth, perhaps, and Purple Kelly Shin. And, um, yeah, in the the last couple of weeks, hopefully, uh, a couple of winners perhaps lined up for you folks, and uh, we're hoping again to get these locked in. Um, Denise Stapley on the books, potentially. Tina Wesson on the books, potentially. And we're very much hoping, and I think we've sort of loosely announced this, but I'll announce it again, and uh, we sincerely hope that this happens uh, for our finale. We are hoping to have winner of Survivor China, Todd Hurt, on the show so uh, again they're just kind of who we've got on the books in terms of the plans but again stay tuned some of these do change so please keep an eye out and we will update you uh, as we go along we do appreciate your support as always thank you for listening thank you for your feedback we do read every message if you uh, tweet us if you send us a message uh, we generally reply to pretty much everyone we get and uh, we always do appreciate you contacting us as well my name is Ben, this has been Survivor Oz thank you for tuning in and we will speak to you next time on Zetrends Trends.